All this is Dr. Mobin Sayyid from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So what are your big plans for the weekend? So we have Algebra Bean here. Hello, Algebra Bean. How are you? DDS is here. Hello. DDS, do you know that I used to be working in Wisconsin for about a year? Texas Meg is here. Doug is here. Pasi is here. Discord, note work. Uh, Texas, hello. Uh, Texas again. Lisu. Finn Bean salutes King Bean and Cool World Bean salute back to you. Doug says none. Lizzie is here. Hello again. Hello back to you as well. So how are things? What is going on? Sadiq Chia Khadka. Sadiq Chia Khadka says hello, hello, hello back to you as well. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, Jane says, first time watching live from Sydney. Very welcome, Jane. How are you doing? Thank you very much for joining. Joy Yoli, what do you think of rest, resting pulse rate in the 50s? Um, <clears throat> many of us have actually lower pulse rates, rate when we are resting. So I don't know what you mean by resting that just normally it is 50 or let's say if you are sleeping, many people, uh, if they are wearing any any devices like Apple watches, they would they would show them 50, which is OK. Secondly, athletes. So Luffy is here. <laughs> I had allowed Luffy to come back in and now he want to go back out. Uh, athletes who have stronger hearts because of their continuous work or workouts their heart do not need a lot of heart rate to pump the sufficient amount of blood through the body so because their power is more they usually have a lower heart rate as well roman says we are back welcome back alex alexander says hi all including luffy let me see if i can bring luffy he may not This is total cheating, and Luffy is not going to live with this for a longer time. That I just pick him up because I think he can go out. <laughs> Luffy, Luffy, Luffy. No, no. So Luffy has a habit because I pick him up and I, I give him a tour of the house for the things that are higher up. So he has a habit of looking around when I hold him. So whenever I hold him, he starts looking around that what is it that I'm going to sniff now. <laughs> Isn't that correct, Luffy? <coughs> what? What happened? Did I say something wrong? <coughs> okay, so <clears throat> let's see. There's a question here. Bon Banzo Bean says, Checking on my CCR5 Delta 32 vaccine response question. I know you've been extremely busy. Have not looked into it yet. My apologies. Um, taxes were due both for my company and for myself. I did them today with the accountant's help. Uh, there were some other things that were due. We talked about some of the folks not being very happy. What? You want to go out? It is so cute to see what Luffy is doing. Okay, I want to show you. Oh, I don't have the I don't have the OBS on. Otherwise, I would have shown you. He was just standing here, looking at me and meowing because he wants to go out. My worry is that um, if he goes out now and I'm speaking here, then I'll become worried that it's night and I don't know where he is. So, uh, Banzo, I'm so sorry. Haven't done it yet. <laughs> Jebra says, so nice to see the anniversary sweater. Thank you very much. So I'm going to make full use of the gift. Poppy says, also, what do you know about the biodistribution of mRNA vaccines? Apparently, the LNPs can cross the blood-brain barrier and carry it through. Is this concerning? 
couple of answers, a couple of ways as well. So let me share my screen. And I'm going to answer to your last part that is it concerning or not. First of all, the biodistribution document, we have been talking about that for some time. Uh, biodistribution document, give me one second. I'm going to open this door for Lucy. Who can... It's just playing there. Okay, so the biodistribution document showed that the LNP, once it is inside the cell, so let's say this is a lipid nanoparticle, the, the LNP breaks open and then messenger RNA comes out. Then the pieces of LNP are ejected. And the reason for them to come out is because they're lipids. Lipid, this is why the messenger RNA is wrapped in an LNP because it acts as a vehicle to cross the, the cell membrane, which normally does not allow things that are water soluble to cross from them. Or charged molecule cannot cross the cell membrane, <laughs> Luffy. Instead, the non-charged molecule like lipids can cross it. So those smaller pieces that are produced, they can get out again and be metabolized. Some of them, some parts of them are metabolized right here. Some are ejected and are metabolized in other parts of the body, which could be liver, which could be the same area of the tissue, like 80% of that was metabolized in the same place. Other pieces went to the other parts of the body, including ovary, including liver, and including other parts. Now these, these uh, imagine chol cholesterol-like. It is kind of a rough equivalence, but just like cholesterol has those lipids, these are the lipids as well. So these lipids can come out and then they can be picked up by other cells. And if they enter other cells, these smaller pieces, cell is least bothered by them. Cell would just metabolize them and destroy them. Liver cells will pick them up and metabolize and destroy them as well. So even if they cross the blood-brain barrier or they cross other barriers and go to other tissues, usually they will be picked up by the tissue and destroyed. Now, there is a hidden question in here. There is a, has been an implication here. And that implication has been, if LNP goes somewhere, see the word I used was LNP. If LNP goes somewhere, lipid nanoparticle, then the implication is it is going there with the messenger RNA in it. And if that is the case, then that means the vaccine is carrying the messenger RNA throughout the body. And wherever that messenger RNA goes, that cell is going to exhibit the spike proteins, which would in turn cause a local inflammatory reaction, killing some of those cells. And that could be a tissue damage. This has been the implication by many, many researchers, but the original document did not show this. They only showed pieces of it going to the other tissues. So if, let's say, if we conclude, let's say we assume that it is the LNP, full LNP, with the messenger RNA in it, that this LNP somehow ejected from the um, deltoid of the person entered the bloodstream, ejected the bloodstream, entered the tissue and tissue cell, went into the tissue cell, and then ejected its messenger RNA over there. If we assume this, then yes, local inflammation will occur wherever that LNP is. So you inject that LNP in thigh, there will be inflammation there or you bring that LNP somewhere in the body, there will be inflammation there. So Luffy really wants to go out. Luffy, Luffy, you can't go out at this time. It's too late. What? DDS says, pause the like button. Yes, Luffy is saying, pause the like buttons. 
<laughs> Barbara says Luffy is punctuating each con concept of ours. Absolutely. Um, Barbara, how is, how is Lotus? Okay, so let's see. Go fake yourself, Megan says. What happens if you give an mRNA vaccine to someone with a different viral infection? If the mRNA packets gets delivered to a cell infected with another virus, would the spike RNA combine with the virus RNA? That's that's not really possible, but let me let me show you as a mechanism. Now keep in mind that RNA viruses are of many types. What happened, Lupin? What? You want to go out? No, I think you don't want to go out, right? <laughs> okay, so he became a little embarrassed. Uh, so the question back to you, uh, the virus and the, let's say here is a cell. This cell has some other virus. Now there are tons of kinds of viruses. There are DNA viruses. There are single-stranded viruses, double-stranded um, messenger RNA type viruses or RNA uh, viruses. Then there are positive sense viruses. There are negative sense viruses. So it really is a very broad question. Every virus's behavior is different, but let me just basically answer the common part of the question for all viruses, and that is if the viral mRNA is out there. So let's say we take adenovirus, and that adenovirus's own DNA enters the cell, which is the normal procedure, and then this DNA inside the cell is transcribed into the messenger RNA. This messenger RNA comes out of the cytoplasm. Now let's say the lipid nanoparticle from the vaccine has entered the cell as well with the messenger RNA of the um, spike protein. Now this messenger RNA is released here and it has become busy making spikes, correct? So now your question is, is there any problem with these two? So in general, no, because they really don't have anything to do to each other. These messenger RNA are gonna go get stuck or get attached to ribosomes, and then they would work with the ribosomes to make whatever proteins they make. So they would do the translation. So there's a ribosome here as well. So messenger RNAs usually do not interact with each other. Now, our cells makes every protein with messenger RNA. So our cell is actually abundantly filled with messenger RNAs and ribosomes are working on it and proteins are being made and those proteins are doing their functions and then they're degraded and then we need more proteins and more ribosomes are working with more messenger RNA and this is a continuous process. So our cell doesn't, it's a, imagine we cook in a restaurant every day for thousands of people. And so chefs are very much used to looking at a recipe, cooking that, handing it over, taking other recipe, cooking that, handing it over. And that's what happens. Luffy is... So now you know where Luffy is. Somebody had been saying, where has been Luffy? Luffy has been out. Uh, my wife has uh, a hobby for which on the Friday evenings she goes out and, and uh, participates in that uh, work. And so I can't let him out because I'm, I'm speaking with you. So if I let him out, then usually she goes out and brings him back. So he's all upset that why can't he go out? Uh, no, it is not about feeding. So he has his feeders. One is sitting here in the kitchen. It is The food is there. Then in the living, there is food. Water is everywhere as well in the house, various places. We have strategically placed pots of water <laughs> that he can drink. He just wants to go out. So <laughs> Alfie Bear says, Luffy's request to go out, the moon is blue and romance is in the air. Yes, he goes and he does altercations outside. Okay, so Sky Frog is here. Hello, Sky Frog, how are you? Uh, question, let's see. Frisco Coupon says, if the average adult, 20 to 50 years old, was to get a third dose of Pfizer, 20 to 50, 
would there be any difference concerns about that dose given at 6 8 9 12 months post second dose okay so <clears throat> let's talk about that this is a very interesting topic and um, let's understand that various durations meet in. alexa stop uh, various durations mean what so let's say we are talking about an adult who got vaccine two doses so vaccine one dose here then another dose here by this age 20 to 50 i am assuming you're talking about theoretically a healthy person so they have a normal immune system they've gotten both doses then 14 days after for pfizer i really like to have 21 days after as full protection, although officially 14 days is the full protection. Remember, there was a study from Israel that showed that after third week, there was no infection in fully protected compared to after two, two weeks. So let's, for our purposes, let's agree that third week after the second dose is the full protection. So now here, the patient has I'm saying patient, the person has IgG going on. This would continue anywhere from four to six months. We saw that in the book, um, um, microbiology, sorry, immunology book, about four months later, the, the cells would start dying and then the immunoglobulins would start going down. Now, we also know that when they would be exposed again, again, the point of vaccine is what? To prevent, you know, the risk of infection or death or hospitalization when the exposure occurs. That is the preparation for the exposure. So let's say, unfortunately, the person gets exposed here. Now, I have done this discussion many times that here, it depends what is their state of the immune system and what is their own state. Again, given you said 20 to 50, for example, that is a healthy person, usually within a couple of days, their immune system would start making the antibodies again. And they should be able to handle it. But let's say there are other reasons. Uh, one reason could be that we are just concerned that, hey, maybe I won't be able to handle it. Another reason could be that the person has type 1 diabetes or they have some other, these or some other issues are present. In that case, now, this is what I wanted to say, <laughs> for which I did this whole story. In that case, from six, four to six months, if there is a concern of exposure, for example, they are going to work in some high-risk area, they are obese, diabetes, other issues, then the third dose can allow the immune system to ramp up again and protect them at the time of exposure. So this is how to see the answer. So six is fine. Uh, from a mechanism point of view, six is the closest to ramp up the immune system again. Eight, nine, 12 are similar because the system went down at six months. So now it is eight months or nine months or 12 months, their behavior, the response is gonna be similar. John H2O says, and he not see my super chats. I have no idea. Uh, there may have been super chats, John. I was, when I'm teaching here, I'm not even looking there. Um, <laughs> John says he ignored me about his cat. So a couple of things. One, believe me, I have never demanded that to speak with me, you need to give me super chats. I have never asked for it. And so uh, please don't be upset. I, I just didn't see it. Now, what is your question? So uh, John, I'm gonna respond to this one. And if you can put your question again. So XN, says, Dr. Bean, I know that you advise with all the, the vaccines, but if you had the privilege to choose 
which one will you choose pfizer or moderna or astrazeneca so barring that novavax is not present my second choice always used to be moderna and my second choice now is moderna as well then pfizer and astrazeneca or jnj is my last choice because of their adenovirus in them having said that this is a my general umbrella term for myself if now i start looking at myself in a more categorical way then for example i am not a woman under 50 so for me astrazeneca and jnj are not that um hurtful not the risk of clotting is not there as much as it is for women under 50 as much as that risk is low for men that risk is even low so that means i should be okay with that second for the messenger rna vaccines and the cardiac inflammation possibility is under 30 years of age and so i'm not at 30 years of age i am at 50 and above so for me messenger rna vaccines are fine as well third j and j vaccine has specially shown less efficacy between the age range of 50 to 60 it is a weird thing maybe it is just a trial they did not have enough people in there uh, below 50 efficacy is good after 60 and 64 efficacy is good but this chunk of age they didn't have the good efficacy so if i had to go and have good efficacy for this age i may have to look at their latest data to see outside of trial have they shown good efficacy so with this now if i tell you this at age 50 no diabetes no hypertension no obesity although do you know that i gained 15 pounds in last few months which i never used to gain weight but i have gained some weight now i need to lose weight um 50 no uh, risk factors no obesity with these moderna is fine pfizer in one way you could say that even better than moderna with the latest data and that is this so pfizer two things and i was speaking with one of the cool beans today and we were discussing this too two things on one end we are seeing pfizer's data from israel a lot of data and we are seeing that it is it has less there was a uk study that showed that pfizer had less intense symptoms compared to moderna so if i'm afraid of symptoms that hey i don't want to be you know fatigued and all that then pfizer may be better but on the flip side the efficacy worry that pfizer's efficacy start reducing very fast and that means it may not be great that is also there although in my opinion pfizer did a disservice to themselves by continuing to push the message of waning immunity because of their pfizer and insisting for a booster i think they were looking at hey we need to get boosters done and this is the narrative but that narrative has caused people to become cautious to say well this this vaccine doesn't look like it has durable um, protection although in general every vaccine or every infections behavior is that the the antigens so antibodies will wane after a few months and then when the infection occurs exposure occurs then they would ramp up okay so i hope that that answers that question for me again if i just simplify it moderna pfizer and then adenovirus based i'm going to go find john's question india says good night good night um where is john's question john h2 says thank you you're very welcome okay so here what's up with the med rbx study titled no significant difference in viral load between vaccinated and unvaccinated asymptomatic and symptomatic groups infected with sars cov 2 delta variant actually interestingly this i do not know exactly this study but this kind of a study is also 
um, in on the CDC site as well for Delta variant, where they say that, hey, vaccinated and unvaccinated have a similar load. I think I, I discussed that a few days ago. Why I discussed that study, the study itself, no, not the study, but I mentioned that study. It was a study from Canada, I believe by Nasreen and her group. The reason I showed it was that it was a preprint, but it was used by CDC. And I was saying, look, people who bash other studies to say it's only a preprint and we should have a published studies and well, CDC was using a preprint as well. In that context, I was showing this. The viral load is, so let's look at this once more. The same, actually, this diagram can work. So if you see here, let's say somebody is vaccinated or infected. And because of that, it really, please remember, every time you're going to talk about somebody's viral load and protection, you will have to see what time are we talking about in addition to their comorbidities, their age, their immune system status, and so on. So there is no standard general statement to give globally to everyone. So for example, we know before the, the vaccine, the risk is different. After the first dose, the risk may reduce after some days, some weeks, but still high. After the second dose, risk is reducing further, but still present. After 14 days, even more or less, and after 20 days, even less, correct? So that means it really depends when are we talking about the, uh, the load or the infection and then the load. For example, if somebody gets infected here, here, five days after dose one, their load and, and another unvaccinated person's load is going to be the same. Now, let's say full protection occurred. The person has active IgGs, IgAs, IgEs, IgDs, IgM would have probably waned away. So he has active immune, immunoglobulins and they get exposed here. So full blown immunity is going on. Antibodies are made and they get exposed. Here, it is possible that they do not have high viral load. And the reason for that is they are exposed at a time when there is a lot of IgG present in the tissue and there, I'm sure, IgA present as well on the mucous membranes. So virus is going to have really hard time to catch onto the cells, go and infect them, and then come out and go to the next cell because both IgA and IgG are working and they're present. So here, if this person is vaccinated or infected and post-infection and healthy person, then their viral load, if they get re-exposed during this type of a time, a month later, two months later, they would not have a high load. But when they reach a point where their antibodies have waned, and it is a natural thing, now, when the infection occurs, this may be vaccinated person or unvaccinated person. Right. I've, I've discussed this difference many times. If it is a vaccinated person, they get exposed here when the immunity has waned. Then it is going to take a few days, anywhere from 10 hours to 24 to 48 hours, they would take, in which they will become their immune system will kind of start becoming active again, how they, the B cells and T cells, memory B cells and T cells, they would start proliferating, they'll start differentiating, they'll start becoming active. During that time, virus has free reign, maybe some hindrance to it, but mostly virus is just gonna be running around having fun because body's, body doesn't have actively produced immunoglobulins anywhere and the cells are not really attacking it because the B and T cells, memory cells are sleeping. So here this vaccinated person or a post-infection person will have similar load as if there was another person who was 
not vaccinated and not post infect infectious they both would be the same however a person who was not vaccinated not infected or as we say um, naive to sars-cov-2 or the vaccines naive meaning their immune system is naive they may now continue to shed for many days that is a normal disease process and we know that in that People behave differently. Some are asymptomatic, some are symptomatic, some are severely symptomatic and so on. So could I say this one person's load will be what? No, because everybody behaves differently. But I can say this, that this would be for a longer period of time because their immune system would take a couple of weeks to have the adaptive arm become active. Then that active arm would start taking care of the thing. So 7, 14 days is going to be normal for the viral load to be high. That means shedding will be high too. This person who was vaccinated and started shedding, in this time frame, their load would be the similar load as unvaccinated. But after two, three days, because their immune system is going to ramp up, their load is going to go down. So that is how. And why is this related to Delta? Because Delta causes very it is contagious right it is more contagious than other strain variants of this so it gets into cell faster and then it replicates it doesn't replicate faster but it gets into the cell faster and then comes out and gets into the next cell faster and that is why it causes damage rapidly so i hope that answers that question Leslie says, grateful to you for being such a great resource. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Kelly. Kelly, I hope everything is okay. M. Gregory says, is COVID going to surpass the Spanish flu? I think it has, at least for U.S., it has already surpa surpassed the flu pandemic that, or endemic at that time. I th so we are already beyond that. Um, Zakaria says, Merck therapeutic versus Vax Arts vaccine, which is better and why? Can you actually tell me the vaccine themselves? I am look at them let's say my mouse just disappears every so often here vax art vaccine okay so vax art has an oral covid vaccine delivery platform employs a modular approach using a replication in competent adenovirus vector that delivers two payloads to the cells of mucosal epithelium of the small bowel. One payload is the gene coding for selected pathogen specific protein antigen, the other payload which is always delivered to gene like toll like receptor. Very interesting. Room temperature stable, broad and durable, proprietary manufacturing, proof of concept is done. Now is this for COVID or something else? So it is interesting, and uh, Merck, I know that Merck has this uh, molnupiravir, which is, mol molnupiravir is not a vaccine, molnupiravir is a uh, antiviral. So Merck is, do they have a vaccine? Merckvaccines.com, I hope it is there, BCG. Luffy, poor Luffy, gave up. Okay, so um, tell me about the vaccine itself. If you're talking about malnupiravir, uh, Zakaria, then malnupiravir is really just a antiviral drug. Vaxart has an adenovirus-based vaccine, just like Janssen and Johnson or AstraZeneca, but taken by mouth 
and it goes into small intestine and from there it enters the cells and give the messenger RNA or the DNA for the adenovirus and then from there the messenger RNA and then, then the spike protein. Interesting one. That should produce more IgAs. <laughs> T. Oliver says, being a Pfizer girl. Nice. Scarlet. <laughs> Luffy Mecton, huh? Providing help in treating cancer and aiding other drugs. It's a molecule. It can be very helpful. Not to be too doom and gloom, but another family friend died of COVID last week after a couple of weeks in ICU. The family wanted to try IBM, but could not find a lawyer. That is very sad. So sorry for your loss, Kelly. Bambi, how are you doing? So Benby is saying that Texas Mag, the lab is being investigated to see how 43,000 PCR results that were positive got reported as negative. 43,000? <laughs> DTS says, Luffy ate the mouse. So this is, my mouse disappears. Yes, Luffy bites it. <laughs> Barbara says, Luffy hides the mouse. Yes. Bruce Patterson. Augie says, Dr. Patterson update. Actually, I need to reach out to them. I have been very busy for the last few weeks and unnecessarily busy. I would, I would reach out. Tuber Sterini says, if I get the Pfizer booster this week, would it be safe for me to get the anti-Delta vaccine when it becomes available? Worried about four shots within one year thoughts. So again, don't have much data. We have data from Israel with three shots and they are fine. So if I am in that kind of a state, I can talk about myself. If I am in that kind of a state that I need a booster, um, I would take the booster. And this is a discussion at my home as well. My only so far um, hesitation has been with my wife's booster because her Johnson & Johnson side effects continued for a long time. So the question is, does she take another vaccine? Fortunately, there has been a study that showed that after Johnson & Johnson, Moderna can actually be a very good booster. So the point is, booster may be necessary if you are feeling that, hey, either I'm going to be exposed, I am needed because I'm an essential worker, or my immune system is not going to be up to this speed or I want to keep my immune system ramped up and I just don't want to deal with the possibility of infection and then struggling and fighting with it. So in those cases, I think it is fine. Now, four shots, I think if three shots did not do much and two did not do much, then four is fine as well. That means the person is tolerating them. They're not going to Imagine, uh, I'm going to give you this example. It's not an apples to apples example. But see, when some people have allergies and they keep getting exposed again and again, they develop the allergic reactions again, for example, hay fever or something. But it is the allergy that occurred again, body ramped up again, reacted to it for some time and goes down. Roller Girl says, hello, hello, Roller Girl, <laughs> how are you? So our patron forever says, are boosters half dose or full dose? So for Pfizer full dose, Moderna is now saying we should give half dose. That is a very interesting idea. The question I had for Moderna was, are they going to charge half as well or the charge is full, but they believe half dose is necessary? Meaning, is this a scientific thing or they're just saying, hey, half dose is good we can charge you half as well. This is Kyrie. This tiny voice is Kyrie. But uh, Moderna is proposing, thinking of proposing half. Pfizer is proposing full. <laughs> Skyfrog says, I'm going for five shots in one year. More power to you, Skyfrog. Skyfrog. 
So Drew Mann says, after a vaccine goes through phase two or three trials, how much longer to approval? Any word on Novavax? So Novavax, good um, result was this, that Novavax had, the participants of Novavax have been considered fully vaccinated. That means they're acknowledged and Novavax is recognized as a vaccine. The last discussion that we saw, I think I, I talked about them in September, where they were saying, we are now going to prepare for EUA. So I think Novavax may not just be fast enough, and it's a matter of resources. So maybe they don't have enough resources to pull together all the data to go to FDA and say, please give us an EUA. And it also seems like I don't think FDA is in a hurry to say we need a new vaccine because I think they have enough vaccines already there. So there is, I don't think there is a lot of traction, but uh, they are on their, uh, they're moving forward. <laughs> Our patron says, vaccine addicts now hanging out in job houses, jab houses. That will be cute. <laughs> Denise says, why can't we have transdermal vaccines? We can. So remember I discussed a platform, Denise, where they were giving transdermal. I think it is a Canadian company, if I remember it correctly. We can. I think it's just people, uh, the companies that have made, they may not be enough powerful or resourceful or have resources. I wanna actually, I'm curious for Novavax as well. So if you don't mind. So this is Novavax's September 17. The U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention recently provided updated guidance stating that participants in the Novavax Prevent 19 Phase 3 clinical trial meet the criteria to be considered fully vaccinated two weeks after they have completed the vaccine active vaccine series. With this validation from the United States leading public health authority, Novavax expects our PREVENT-19 Phase 3 clinical trial participants will be considered fully vaccinated and in compliance with mandated vaccination policies, including those of employers and any other organizations or entity requiring proof of vaccination. Novavax is grateful to our clinical trial participants for helping. So look at this one. Novavax is preparing to submit NVX COV-2373, our protein-based COVID-19 vaccine, to the US FDA for emergency use authorization. The CDC guidance does not imply that the vaccine has not been approved. I think this is what I had discussed as well. So this is sep September 17, almost a month ago. Let's see if they have more news. Actually, I'm going to go to Novavax in the news. <clears throat> this is 624. Okay, so this is they quoting other news. Press releases. This is October 15. That is seasonal flu. Novavax to participate in World Vaccine Congress. Okay. Complete Prevent 19 Phase 3 Clinical Results Manuscript. Oh, wow, I should have gone over this one. So they have the transcript available. Oh, I, I missed it. <clears throat> so just let's look at it together. So full results from the Prevent 19 Pivotal Phase 3 trial of vaccine candidate have been posted to MED preprint 
The trial achieved its primary endpoint in which Novavax vaccine recombinant particle demonstrated 100% protection against moderate and severe disease. And 90, wow, that is beautiful. This is awesome. So 90.4% efficacy overall is awesome. And 100% protection against moderate and severe disease, awesome. Now the question is side effects. PREVENT-19 was a randomized observer-blinded placebo-controlled trial conducted in nearly 30,000 adults, so good number, in the United States and Mexico. Participants were 18 years of age and older and randomized in a 2-1 ratio to receive two 5-microgram dose. Okay, so, and they have a matrix MTM adjuvant. They are given 21 days apart. They have a blinded crossover as well. So people went from one arm to the other. The trial achieved its primary endpoint of efficacy in preventing polymerase chain reaction confirmed symptomatic mild, moderate, and severe COVID-19 without onset with onset at least seven days after the second dose. So 21 days apart and seven days after that. So very similar, I believe, to Moderna and Pfizer as well. Pfizer, I think Moderna is 14 days after Pfizer is set. Pfizer is 14 as well. So they are 17 days, seven days. Solicited adverse events were predominantly mild to moderate and transient were more frequent in the vaccine recipients and increased after the second dose. Severe reactions were infrequent and there were no safety concerns related to the vaccination. I want to see what were the severe if we go here. So they say, serious, I need to download their PDF and go through this. Conclusion, well tolerated. Um, if I open their PDF, give me one second. I'm so sorry if I'm wasting your time, but I think this is an interesting news. And without doing my regular <laughs> drawing part, let's look at it this way. I want to see the side effects. Results, conclusion. Look at this. Uh, I just read vaccine comprising full length stabilized prefusion recombinant S protein trimer produced from Wuhan sequence. So it is prefusion stabilized. Okay, so <clears throat> method, we have seen the method. Efficacy assessment, you see the side effects. Safety assessment, safety analysis. Safety data, okay. Efficacy, safety. Solicited local and systemic adverse effects were predominantly mild to moderate and transient, but more frequent in vaccine, which is normal and natural. After each dose, the most frequently reported solicited local adverse effect were tenderness and injection at site pain. Tenderness at the site of injection and pain. The median duration of these events was lesser than two days. Severe grade three local reactions were infrequent, 1.1% versus 1%, and 6.7% versus 1% after dose two. So more, more severe after second dose. Still rare. The most common solicited systemic after effect headache, myalgia, fatigue, and malaise were detected more frequently among Novavax. Okay, <clears throat> fever of any severity was rare. Very interesting. So no, no fever or rarely among vaccine placebo group after each dose. Severe systemic reactions were infrequent. I want to see what were these. So there were no episode. Okay, so this is very important. No episodes of anaphylaxis. Very good. No evidence of vaccine-associated 
enhanced COVID-19. So no antibody dependent enhancement and no events that triggered pre-specified pause rules. So nothing bad that they had to stop the, the trial. No episodes of Guillain-Barre and no imbalance in myocarditis, pericarditis. They're saying no imbalance. That means there were some in both groups or thrombosis with thrombocytopenic syndrome. So, wow, no GB syndrome, no imbalance in myocarditis, no imbalance in thrombocytopenia. All cause mortality was balanced, 9, 0.5% among Novavax and 5, 0.5% in placebo. Now, how about severe cases? Okay, so very good. I now want to see the efficacy. So you have seen the side effects don't look like a lot of problem efficacy. Um, I wanted to see a table with the efficacy. Do they have a table at the end? Demography and baseline characteristics. What is this? Okay, so I now I may be wasting your time. Uh, I need to look into it a little more, but generally it looks like it is beautifully done and it has shown very good results. John Titer says, does your talk on FSCC regarding the pituitary gland from Wednesday have implications for post-vaccine neurological issues? It could be. So again, please remember that was uh, a theoretical possibility considering the symptoms and how the management was uh, helping. So that says it is probably some hormonal imbalance. Now, if you connect that to neurological symptoms, that mean in the brain, the hormonal system controllers are hypothalamus and pituitary. So those must be. So again, it is a theoretical possibility. Is it really happening? Don't know yet. Patizik says, is this a good news for Novavax? So many waiting for this vaccine. Absolutely. And they've given the trial results. That means people can now give them the feedback and they can comment on this that means they can actually take this to EUA for EUA DC says when is the anti delta due out so i know that moderna had once said that hey we are working on a cocktail for delta as well haven't heard anything more Denise says zero thrombocytopenia. Denise, they said no imbalance in thrombocytopenia. That means they may have thrombocytopenia. Let me actually search for it. Thrombo. Oh. <clears throat> See, they're saying no imbalance in myocarditis, pericarditis, or thrombosis with thrombocytopenic syndrome. So that is one. Then... So there is no data about it. So I, I would have hoped to see a table to say two people here, two people here. Maybe it is there. I have to see it, but I can't search for it.
<laughs> Denise says oh play on words. Yeah, they put the imbalance in the beginning and then the rest of the statement. Okay, so I'm just seeing if there are more questions. Otherwise, we we say bye and we go have fun with the weekend. So BioRapid007 says, what are your thoughts on planning for large-scale breakthrough infections and treating those infected by them, isolating at home and being given a care package like in India? Care packages should have been out there from the first day. Um, I was, as much as this morning's talk was kind of um, um, destroyed maybe because of bad audio, what I was uh, intrigued by was that their leaders immediately decided to get in touch with people. They opened the lines and they said, call us if you have any question and it is a free call. And they showed the doctors sitting in there responding to them live. And I think that they had some um, news conferences as well in which the press would cover doctors sitting somewhere, uh, you know, doing the telemedicine. Imagine the confidence that would create and the connection that would create. So the I was thinking at that time, so I'm an American now for, for a long time. So sometimes I become jealous here as well. Sometimes I, I wish every country had what we have in America. Similarly, sometimes when I see somebody else doing it, I say, why aren't we doing it? So I would have wished that we also here connected that deeply with the, with the people and we provided them information, we provided them news. We just we managed it differently. <clears throat> John Titor says, this is my fun weekend. This is mine too. Do you know that this makes me so excited when I'm speaking and talking and in, in friends that then I cannot sleep. I'm just so hyper afterwards. So Truffles says, I heard something about molnupiravir having possible mutagenic effect. That is a pretty serious one. So that is one area where I need to do more research. I had shared two studies that said they didn't observe it, but somebody said rather angry to me in the comments that, hey, that was the study supported by the company. So sponsored by the company. So I am going to do some more research to see what is the reality with the mutagenic? One thing that you may have seen is that I don't try to tarnish something or badmouth something or praise something without having some data in the, in the back. And I have said it many times, if the data is bad, then my message is bad as well. But at least I still try to bring some reference uh, and work with that. So I have to look for the reference and understand more before I simply say yes, because every news article, every place you hear that, but I have to, I have to see it. <laughs> Christine says, love it that you bounced back. Thank you very much. Andrew says, uh, please discuss the allegation that vaccines contain graphene oxide. I have been hearing about this for a long time. I would look into it. Uh, let me take a note. The problem is that there are so many rumors that are out there that chasing them all and then verifying them is a tough thing. It's a lot of time consuming work.
took note. Roller girl says you're awesome. Thank you very much. You're awesome too. <laughs> we say that to each other. Uh, so John Titor says, have you talked about uh, naltrexone? Not yet, but that is an important drug as well because I'm seeing some doctors using it with lots of success. Go fake yourself, Megan says. The recent FDA report on the j and jab says it is minus 6% effective against severe critical delta infection, negative 6% effective. This seems a serious safety signal to me, yes. Um, so again, without seeing why, uh, I can't say. And... I had made this comment a few days ago that one cannot just predict it is ADE and somebody said <laughs> essentially that no, they can. So ADE is a microscopic, ultra microscopic, electron microscopic level um, mechanism that is happening inside the cells or around the cells. Um, so let's see. J and J Jansen. Efficacy minus six percent FDA. Five hours ago. This is time. So this is not an FDA, this is just a an article. The Food and Drug Administration Expert Vaccine Panel on Friday, October 15, recommended a booster dose of the Johnson Johnson. In unanimous vote, the 19-member panel recommended the booster for anyone who was previously immunized with the vaccine at least two months after the first dose with the advice the panel has now backed booster for all. Why can I not scroll this? So I cannot scroll this one. Interesting. So the booster... That is a news for my wife. I'm going to tell her when she comes back. Um, J and J. What is this date? This is October 5, 2021. What is the headline? Johnson & Johnson announces submission of emergency use authorization amendment to the US FDA to support boosters of single shot. They are clever. They, <laughs> they joined the race by one shot and now they're saying, hey, we should have two. <laughs> we also should have two, which in general, is not a bad thing because their efficacy is generally low with one shot. This actually, what we should have done is this. We should have looked at the people, as you are saying, go fake yourself uh, here, that the efficacy is minus six against severe and critical. We should look at that data. I haven't seen it yet. To actually see that the people who are vaccinated with Johnson & Johnson, what is their situation outside? If they are doing well, again, this comment here doesn't show that they're doing well. If they are doing well, then we should think about other vaccines to have one dose as well. But if they're not doing well, then yeah, this vaccine should look at second dose. So let's see. So last month, the company released data reinforcing the strong and long lasting protection of its COVID-19 vaccine the largest real-world evidence study of a COVID-19 vaccine reported to date in the U.S. demonstrated stable vaccine effectiveness of 79%, and the range is 77 to 80, for COVID-19-related infections, and 81%, range 79 to 84, for COVID-19-related hospitalizations, 
there was no evidence of re reduced effectiveness, vaccine effect, reduced effect in, effectiveness over the study duration. Comparable, so this is March to July. Comparable vaccine effectiveness was demonstrated when the study was extended to August 31, including when the Delta variant became dominant in the US. These data were consistent with the phase three ensemble trial. So go fake yourself, Megan, your comment and this data here, they don't jive. So I have to find the FDA site that says that. Hmm. This this thing I should see their data here. FDA advisory panel two hours ago. Where is their presentation? So let's see. <clears throat> No, this is just their agenda. Um, I need to see this data. So sorry, uh, I need to look at the data. So let me take this as a note, which is interesting. Jensen F. C. We'll do that. So Skyfrog says that was the link to the data. Skyfrog, page 22, found it. So if I go in here, I was trying, I was thinking that these may actually take me to it but they did not see these are not working page two so these are not clickable any advice <laughs> Dr. Wright says FDA doesn't need data. Uh, they have admitted found graphene in it. Okay. Page 22. Lizzie says minus six for Delta. That would be really bad. So Martin says, should we really be expected to take a vaccine without knowing the ingredients? No. And usually uh, when I had been reviewing the vaccine what is that their trial results in there there are uh, uh, data there are paragraphs that show the composition they have to disclose it to fda and fda has disclosed it in there so now the only way to say that there is graphene or graphene is to say they were lying so i do not know and i have no tools to understand who is lying so I would look into the data though. Zan Solo says, what's your take on pre-planned eight doses? <laughs> pre-planned eight doses, mandate in all. Current so-called booster shot is the third in the list. There are buzz that all governments had made the deal with Big Pharma. I don't. So you may have seen, I am very, very much um, naive to conspiracy or rumors. I try to keep myself attached to data. Even then, um, there are people who think I'm not doing good, but I try to keep attached to the data and based on data. So, Color Robert, I will talk about nitazoxanide.
<laughs> and you says i'm in melbourne so i'm laughing because it's delirious so algebra says why would igg levels reduce after jnj vax in august after 10 months of being elevated since november yeah so that does not make sense they can wean slowly but not all of a sudden <laughs> DDS is tiny mouse duck. So you guys are making me embarrassed enough. I need to go change my mouse. Although this mouse has really helped with my hand, uh, Avox on Twitter has asked me to buy the, uh, what is that mouse? A dolphin mouse? So let me show you. I need to buy that one. This is the one. this guy so i do not know if dolphin mouse makes that sound or not but it looks nice and it it is possibly a um, ergonomic mouse i was going to click on this reddit link and Re reddit links are always scary or risky so i didn't click on it so once again <clears throat> Johnson and Johnson vaccine minus six percent efficacy. That efficacy that is really intriguing me. If I said so, this is stat news. If they let me read it. No. I'll have to do separate <laughs> research before I keep wasting your time. So Lizzie says, uh, page 22, table 9. Lizzie, where? Uh, where Lizzie? So this is Novavax, oral vaccine, Johnson and Johnson. This is previous talk. Um, <laughs> Jensen. So now my my lack of uh, skills are showing Jensen efficacy. <clears throat> October 4. I don't know where it is, sorry. <laughs> so uh, go fake yourself, Megan. Uh, do me a favor, uh, just tell me what to look for. So search for FDA, here it is, one second. FDA 153037, okay. FDA one. Five three zero three seven. Is this a correct one? One five three zero three seven. Okay, so now page twenty two. Safety analysis. So I saw Lizzie saying page twenty. To Lizzie, <laughs> we are we are studying together. <laughs> this is how it goes. <laughs> Skyfrog says it makes a flipper sound. 
So good, it doesn't make a flippant sound. Uh, okay, so I'm so page twenty two. I'm gonna go there. Page four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 21, 22. Okay, <clears throat> page 22, delta, delta, minus 6%, here it is. That is so bad. Okay, so let's see what it is. This is post hoc analysis of vaccine efficacy against centrally confirmed moderate to severe critical COVID-19 with onset at least 14 days after vaccination by virus variant final efficacy analysis 3001 now is this johnson and johnson so they're saying for delta n was 19400 and is this the moderate to severe? So 11 became severe and 10 became severe in placebo. Number is too small, but still, yes, it is <laughs> minus 6% efficacy. That is so sad. Um, how about, yeah, do they not have more? This is not enough data. But this is um, evident. And look at the range. Although range crosses the unity, so it becomes invalid. Minus 178, 259. Range should stay on one side. If it is crossing like here, then it becomes not useful. It's crossing here as well. Very interesting. Thank you for doing this. I'm going to save this link to study it afterwards okay <clears throat> So Lizzie says number two small contested uh, to other variants. Yes, you're correct. So I'm not saying that uh, it is incorrect. I'm seeing it minus six percent for delta, alpha nine, beta thirty six, eleven. Interesting. I have to do some more digging, but yes, I see it. So judgment care USA document, be nice to put that link in show notes. Why not I just put that link right here right now? So here it is. Andrew says, yes, he's demented. Who's demented? <laughs> Thanks, so happy you found it. Thank you very much. It took some time to find it. <laughs> Doug says Biden. Zia says, Zia, seen you after a long time. Hi, Dr. Bean and Cool Beans. Happy to be here and following. Just be so confused on all the misinformation given, taking my evidence still and have not got, gotten the virus. We, majority of us have been safe, pretty safe. We have reached so far. I mean, I don't want to jinx it that tomorrow we get sick, but so far so good. So art patron, I always wanted to ask you, you are art patron forever. Because of that, have you <laughs> liked my art as well?
So the November is coming. November Rain is a very good song. There is a discussion about song. I love November Rain. Thank you. <laughs> the name name checks out. Closet picker, I saw the page 22. It actually that is a page open right now. Timothy says, do you shed spike protein from COVID vaccines? No. And Greg is saying we are safe because we listen to your advice. Thank you. Uh, I have always offered mechanisms and uh, information. Barbara says that link isn't working. So Barbara, if I go in here, then put it back here. Let's see. It should work, Barbara. This is correct link. Melamorph says, I also love that you show your art for us all. Thank you very much. Thank you. It, it takes some um, guts to show my art because I don't, I'm in the beginning of it. RW says, oh, great presentation on Armectin. Thank you. I thought it was very good. And based on that, I was actually thinking. So um, let's have a quick heart to heart for a second. For about a month or so, couple of months as people have started attacking and distracted me and my communication became a little less. I used to have about 300 to 400,000 views in every 48 hours. They have gone down to 69,000 I was seeing this morning. That means slowly it is just shutting down. And YouTube gave me a strike as well that also reduces the algo's uh, inclination to promote this channel because it is a struck channel. Um, so there are similar effects everywhere else. So I was actually thinking to do something more as well, more than COVID, and diabetes is one. However, I want to do 10 minute talks, small talks that can easily be digested. So I was thinking of three things, and tell me which one would you like? One is 10 minutes talks about diabetes, hypertension. This is one group I was thinking. Second was, 10 minutes talk about Nobel Prizes for various medical things, just like we did today. And whatever medicine it is given for, or molecule or procedure, discussion of that molecule procedure, um, that discovery. And just taking it from, let's say, 10 years ago and just going over one by one. Two, or third, totally different. So, um, there is a, many folks here don't know it. I love stories. That is why I draw all these things and I make them. I like stories. And um, I used to write tiny little stories and throw them away. And I used to read a lot of stories. So I had been thinking to make, you know, the um, Alif Lala. Alif Lala is Arabian Nights or 1000 Nights and One Night. I was thinking of doing Alif Lala stories narrations and one story, let's say every day, and you tuck yourself in your bed and you have a story. So tell me out of these, what, or tell me some other idea of a channel. We, we would do a different channel. We'll continue with these discussions. We'll take them, some of them to Odyssey, but what other thing can be interesting? Nobel. So <clears throat> PJ Moran says Nobel. So option one, talking diabetes, hypertension. Option two, talking about Nobel, Nobel prizes in medicine. Maybe then at some point we'll expand that to Nobel prizes in other areas, but even medicine, it's a lots of interesting area. And the third one is the stories. I love poetry of Rumi. So I have Rumi here. 
you would like this. So this book over here, uh, this one, this is the um, the uh, recitations of Umar Khayyam, and I also have Rumi. These are beautiful ones. Okay, so Sky Frog says story like Gene Shepherd. Okay. So Nobel Prize talks, stories, Rumi is great. Stories and Nobel, option three, stories. I love Rumi. I like stories and poetry too. Stories with good messages, yes. <laughs> and says do all three. Mimi says I love Rumi. I like stories, Melamorph says. Joey says, hello, Dr. Bean. Hello, back to you. Stories. Jody says, stories and Nobel. Skyfrog says this. Okay. Uh, Barbara says, I love the Nobel Prize talks idea and also the stories. Okay. <laughs> LP says all three. LP, you want all of these things, right? Patty Zick says, can I suggest a fun show talk about food places? I think that is a great idea. Do I have to go and eat? I will become like that big so soon. <laughs> Dr. Right Life says, never give up. Yep. That is a very good idea. RW says, dedicate a night to each choice. That's a good idea. Italia Bean says, love the story idea. You're my hero. Thank you very much. Story. I love that idea too. I get very excited about stories. <clears throat> so, Requited says, YouTube seems to be rewarding short stories and quantity. So, multiple three to five minutes video boosted the algorithm. Perhaps a clips channel with the good questions broken out in its own videos also. That is very, very interesting. And of course, from quantity point of view, there are two two videos every day on my channel, but they are long. And because of that, they are shared less and they are liked less and they are then I'll go promote them less. On top of that, the um, people have been reporting them and then YouTube has been giving strikes on them, uh, which also caused less um, I'll go kind of does not promote such channels which may be tainted so <clears throat> but this is a good idea i wanted to shorten this is also a good idea perhaps a clips channel with the good questions broken out into an, its own videos that's a good idea <laughs> this is a nice idea to randy says do all three we will soon see which is most popular that is fair Skyfrog says, to, uh, story title, Luffy Tales. I love it. Skyfrog, I think Luffy Tales is a nice idea. Blacklight art. John Titer says, yeah, so that is the thing. I love sharing your content, but sometimes it's hard to get someone to watch your an hour. I totally agree with that. One night each. So let me tell you some wisdom of my wife. My wife has been asking me for two, three years to reduce the video sizes to 10 minutes and be done. And uh, in the time of pandemic, my video sizes actually, length actually increased. So here we are. Patty says you should have Jackson Galaxies on your show. Excellent. So we'll do this. Remember that other channel that I had made on YouTube, which YouTube struck down all videos from it? I think on that channel, I'm going to start doing, you know, these other test possibilities. Christine says you, you can do an illustrated children's medical book. Yes, I, I know. that I actually every day think about it, that imagine we come online and exactly like a children's book, 
there is a talk 10 minutes long just children's book page after page after page the problem is it takes so much time to draw them to think about them to have a topic then pull the content out summarize it then to draw it in a polished format while there is business there is distractions there are people you know coming after me all the time and th there is just life as well <laughs> so this would have been great i have somehow not been able to reach a point to have enough resources to hire artists to say i'll give you an idea go please do it so i think i'm not able to scale other than doing things by myself yet Stratalyze says, great job on FLCC's update, one of the best. Really, Stratalyze, are you, do you really mean it? Because they have so many people who come and talk there every time. So I did not know that. I was just doodling. <laughs> so good if that was useful. Melamar says, yeah, children, medical book, and illustrator online. So fun and inspiration. Yes. So if you go to Dr. Bean's site, you would see that um, at one point I had a, so I'm just taking notes, one second, please. So just taking ideas and notes. Um, <clears throat> if you go to my site, drbean.com, you will see that there is a, a module called Bedtime Stories, in which I talked about diabetes, but that was mostly just bedtime. You are supposed to be in your bed, and I'm just talking about something new about diabetes every day. Nairi says, I love, love your long talks. Thank you very much. <laughs> you look he can be the host he fights he went somewhere and i, sla I think he slept after throwing some tantrums that i want to go out now he's sleeping adventures of luffy yeah he's something that's actually a very good idea what about medical history stories going back to different centuries absolutely for example do you know one For example, nowadays, something is happening. And remember that person who said, I always forget his name, um, who had asked that wash your hands after autopsies and before, um, before helping women give birth. That doctor was declared um, out of his mind and a bad doctor. Uh, to the point that he was thrown in a mental ward where he lived till he died there. So they almost killed him for that idea. And rest in peace for him that his idea has brought so many, saved so many lives. And I used to think about that and I used to see, think that what kind of situation would there be that people would have been, doctors would have been so resistant to just an idea of cleaning your hands. And then it is such a weird thing that nowadays you can actually see this happening, that you can see people taking down others for such simple things and these simple messages. When you just think about this, uh, Luffy Mectin and the and the reactions in the yeah and <laughs> on that so somber note how about we stop for today so Zen Solo says his name is Semmelweis. Yes, Semmelweis. Can you imagine his uh, help and his what happened to himself?
So with this, Drew says, um, I really enjoyed your talk with Dr. Priya J. Singh. Honey, can't wait to watch next lecture. Yeah, so she had asked me to send her the topics on next today, and I didn't do it. I'll do it on Monday. <laughs> so, um, so thank you very much for everything. Please do me a favor. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share. And if you can support, if you would like to support this work, there are links in the description. You can uh, buy me a coffee. You can buy. You can be a patron, or you can uh, you can use PayPal as well. So if you would like to support this work, there are links in the description. Meanwhile, like, subscribe, and share, and have a great weekend. Enjoy. I would see you on Monday. Bye-bye.